Hello again. Uh, welcome to another session on Azure Data Studio and Notebooks. Today we're going to look at the organization of multiple notebooks. Pretty straightforward to open up a single notebook, add content, code, results, and save it. But what if you wanted to orchestrate several notebooks into maybe chapters, more content than you want to put in a single notebook, but have them essentially bound together? What sort of technique or process would you use with Azure Data Studio and Jupyter Notebooks? So we'll take a look on the screen a folder that has an example of multiple notebooks. And so we'll take a look at the highest level of the notebook. Notice you have an underscore data folder, you have a content folder, config YAML, and then requirements.txt. Now I could drill into each of these, but I think it's a little bit more cumbersome. I'm using a tree view for the command prompt. This is a nice rendering of the tree. Now you can see under content, we have additional files, two additional folders. And finally here, we have a copy of the notebooks that we've been collecting. And I've got a total of, uh, what about 10 notebooks at this point. I do want to combine these all or bind these together in a, in a meaningful way. So we'll take a look in Azure Data Studio. I'm going to do a file and open of the of a folder because we're just working with files and, and subfolders. So instead of opening a single file, we're going to open up a folder that will provide us access to many files, folders, and subfolders within this folder that we're opening. So it wants to know what folder I've got this one called Practical Azure Data Studio. So I'll open that up. And at this point, we can see what the layout of this particular Jupyter notebook, or I guess I should say collection of notebooks, how, how that appears. I use the, I have two general sections. The first one has seven chapters or groupings, roughly based on chapters. The second one has three. You'll also notice there's this little M next to some of the files and folders, meaning that that is controlled by Markdown, or if you were to click on it, you would get some, some Markdown. Let me just clear all this so we're, we're starting fresh. So if we start by clicking on Welcome, notice that's an M, this is a Markdown file, and it's going to pop up with the markdown as well as which includes a couple of links to the two sections that I have. So the first question that you might have is how do you get this table of contents? This is actually driven by a YAML file and the YAML file itself contains the table of contents that is used for rendering. This particular contents of this markdown are actually driven by a readme file and the readme file may or may not reflect truly what is in the underlying folder structure instead it's its own markdown file so you might wonder well how is it all mapped together so first of all you'll see a title the the title Practical Azure Data Studio actually comes from, so if you see, this is right at the root, config.yaml. If we take a closer look at that particular file right here, so we'll open that up and you'll see that it has the title Practical Azure Data Studio. So that is actually where this particular value in the saved Jupyter Notebooks will come up with its value. So I'll go ahead and circle that and connect the dots. The next thing you'll see is this welcome. The welcome itself, that literal, comes out of the underscore data toc.yaml file. 
So this is actually tied together. And we can take a quick look at that. If we go into the underscore data and look at this file, you'll see that title is welcome. Welcome is actually what you will see inside of Azure Data Studio, but that's not all. You'll notice that underneath that you have a title followed by indented titles. Each would have a URL or a link to the actual file that we have within our tree structure in, in our, our, our windows. All right, so also this uh, table of contents is responsible for what you're seeing here in terms of the layout. As a side note, you'll notice that this particular table of contents YAML file does go into all the specifics of the title that you would like to present and the actual link or the URL, in this case, to a, to a local folder. So finally, the, the readme files, and the readme file would control what you see on links. So for example, by clicking welcome, this is a readme file that will show you the contents of this. So this particular readme file, which is directly in the contents pointing to the deep dive and, and the landscape is coming out of this particular readme file. So all these contents come from here. And then you'll see another readme file underneath in these two subdirectories, deep dive and landscape. Those would control what you see after clicking within a subfolder. So in summary, there are really three things to be concerned with. One is the folder structure. There are the table of contents, which will give you the rendering by clicking on the Jupyter Notebooks. And then finally, there is the README. And the README is going to control what you see by a single click within Azure Data Studio on a section. So hopefully that has opened your eyes to what's involved with having multiple notebooks, how you tie them all together, and how probably a tool to aid in this navigation would come in handy. Thanks for watching.